it really bothers me when people say you signed up for it or it's part of the job. It is not part of the job for you to be in danger. It is not part of the job for you to be um, uncomfortable to the point where you feel like you're going to lose your license. Mm -hmm. It is not part of the yeah. job for your mental health to suffer so much that you are not able to take care of your patients. Welcome back, everybody. Today we have Ashley Alums with us, and she is our guest speaker who's been in pediatric home health. Hi, Ashley. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, first, if you could just tell our viewers a little bit more about your background in nursing, um, kind of your journey that you've gone through so far. Okay. Yeah. So I've been a nurse a total of 10 years now. Um, I started off as a um, CNA in a long-term care facility, and then I moved up to um, LVN in that same facility um, right after I graduated, and I did the ICU. Um, um, it's like a five-bed ICU in an LTAC. Um, after that, I moved to Texas and got into pediatric home health care. Um, I've been with the same company on and off for the 10 years that I've been a nurse. Um, and I would just, you know, kind of pick patients up and stuff uh, here and there. Um, and then I went into um, long-term care facility. Um, I've also worked in um, a pediatric uh, nursing home in Gladewater, Texas uh, for a little while. Um, but yeah, most of my nursing career has been long-term care and pediatric home health. That's amazing. And what made you gravitate more toward pediatric home care versus... Uh, adults or the general population? Well, to be honest, I just, I figured if I was going to be in the facility or in a house by myself, I would want to be able to um, like pick the kids up, you know what I mean? Like do it myself. Um, so usually I work with younger kids, so they're a lot easier to transfer, things like that. Um, and then also I just found that working with babies in a home just made more sense to me than adults. It was more of just a comfort um, mm -hmm. thing me. I don't know. I just didn't, didn't like the idea of working with adults in, inside their home. I don't know. Yeah. What sparked your desire to go into home health? Because you were in a facility with LTAC. So what, what made you make that transition to go to the home health uh, venue? Yeah. So to be honest, um, I love the LTAC hospital. That was one of my favorite jobs that I've ever had. And um, it was in Oklahoma. So when I moved to Texas, it just I, it was hard for me to get into an LTAC here. Um, and so I literally just, you know, started applying places and I was like, oh, I'll try pediatric home health. So it wasn't like a passion thing. It just kind of uh, worked out <laughs> that <laughs> home health agency was the first one that called me and had a patient for me right away. So it just all kind of worked out that way. Um, but yeah. Uh, so it fit the need, but then it turned into a long-term like satisfying career. Yeah. Yeah, I love pediatric home health um, for multiple reasons, um, mainly because, like I said, if I'm going to work in a home, I wanted to work with uh, with children. Yeah, uh, I find that I just give a little bit more when it's, you know, kids, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. They speak to my heart a little bit more. Um, and typically I work nights so the parents are asleep um, or they're gone. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so that was another reason. Cause I was like, uh, you know, I don't, I want, I want you guys to, to sleep and leave me alone a little bit. Cause you know, parents can be overwhelming when it comes to this. Yes. So, yeah. So it just worked out to my personality. Like I, you guys are here, but sleep and you know, you guys let me do what I, <laughs> let me do what I'm here for. And it just, it just works out. Yeah. That was one of the things for me that made me not want to go into pediatrics was just families in general can be really demanding and overwhelming when they're adults. And mm -hmm. I know it's, it can be exponentially more so with kids. And so that's, that's really cool that you're able to find a balance and still doing pediatric care, but then making that fit more with your personality. And. Oh yeah. I mean, you get, you know, with home health, the thing that I like about it is that you get to choose your patients, right? When you go into a facility, you get what you get mm -hmm. and you don't throw it, right? You just, yeah. <laughs> You get it again, you don't throw a fit. You, you just get whoever comes in and you don't have anything to say about it. If that's your assignment, that's your assignment. And it doesn't matter if you like them, love them, hate them, they stress you out. It doesn't matter. You yeah. just, 
But with home health, the rules are a little bit different, right? So you have to be super comfortable in that environment. So you have to, um, so you can base, I feel like you can advocate for yourself a little bit more in home health, right? Because no one can tell you what makes you comfortable, uncomfortable, you know? And, And so if I go to this house and there's for any reason I'm uncomfortable, I don't have any pressure here, right? Like I usually do a, um, which I recommend anybody that's going into home health, always do a home visit before you accept a patient. Right? Oh, interesting. <laughs> but sometimes they'll just say, they'll just give you a patient and they'll just be like, when do you want to go? I always do a home visit. So I do an interview with the parents. They, they're interviewing me, but really I'm interviewing you. Like I'm yeah to see if I want to work in your home, <laughs> but we'll let them think they're in charge. So <laughs> I, I always do a um, an interview with the, with the parents first, and then I always opt in for the training. I never opt in for a, a two hour training or something, you know, they'll like to give you an hour or something, give you the basics to run down and leave you there. I never do that. I always do the full shift training um, mm-hmm. at one. And um, that helps you to realize, like, do you really want to take care of this patient? You you can see how they act throughout a whole shift, mm-hmm. um, get a, a, a feel of the parents and things like that. And I'm very um, emotional, like a uh, gut-based person. So I get vibes. So when I pull up to your house, I can pretty much tell you if I'm going to work here or not. Now, I'm going to finish <laughs> you <laughs> but I, I pretty much know if I'm going to work there or not so I if you're going into home health definitely don't um, allow them to just throw you in with a, always go in do an interview with the family um, ask them questions you will learn a lot from a family because I know a big fear about home health is being in a situation that's uncomfortable mm-hmm. you know house they get to do what they want yeah don't get to really have an opinion about how they care for their kid or how they, um, you know, live their lives or anything like that. So all you can do is control your environment, right? By by choosing your environment. So that's like the only thing that you can control. You don't want to go in and the parents do things that are, that make you uncomfortable, which I mean, or they want you to do certain things with their kids, like give them meds a certain way or things that you're like, there's no order for that. I'm not, you know? Yeah. You want to go in and test it and see if this is a place that you're going to feel comfortable at um, because you always have to keep your license in mind. So, um, you know, you got to advocate for yourself if you go into home health. So I've always had really good jobs because I have no problem with going, you know, I'm not a good fit for this family. It just doesn't make sense for me to be to work here. And you just have to be okay with that. Like that's really good advice because so many nurses feel obligated just to take what's there. And especially because if it's a patient that needs help, we, as a nurse, we want to help and we want to be there. And so it's like, oh, it's just part of the job. But that safety aspect is really crucial that we deserve to be safe as nurses too. So to know, like, if you feel like comfortable in the situation, physically comfortable, or even with your license, doing what they're going to want you to do. That's, that's really key. Thank you for sharing Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. It really bothers me when people say you signed up for it or it's part of the job. It is not part of the job for you to be in danger. It is not part of the job for you to be um, uncomfortable to the point where you feel like you're going to lose your license. Mm -hmm. It is not part of the job for your mental health to suffer so much that you are not able to take care of your patients. If you are uncomfortable, and I'm not talking about, we all are in uncomfortable situations mm-hmm. every day, but there are things that you can control. And there are things that, you know what I mean, that yeah. just not part of the job. It's, yeah. it's and yes, this patient needs help, but you have to be able to help them, mm-hmm. you know, and if you're uncomfortable, scared, frightened, whatever that is you are not going to be able to help them to your full potential. So, and, and in home health is different. You don't have other nurses to help you. You yeah. can't go get a senior nurse and say, hey, what's going on with this? Or mm-hmm. get a supervisor or something because they're not there. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not going to be there. It's you and your patient a lot of the time if the family's gone. So sometimes you don't even have a, a mom or a dad there to help you if something goes wrong. Mm-hmm. So you really, uh, you need to be a lot more picky when you are in a home setting and you're going to be by yourself. Because if something happens to that patient, your license is on the line. So you can't, it was just out of the kindness of my heart. We all know you're a sweet person. Protect your license. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Did you ever have periods of time when you were 
turning down a job that then you had a gap in work for a little bit or was there always enough coming around? Oh, definitely. Um, that happened for me a, a, a quite a bit. And that's probably why I did it on and off for, you know, the 10 years. If they had a patient that I liked, I would um, I would go, you know, work somewhere else for a little while. Um, once again, I'm very picky about who I work for, whether that's a facility or not. So they had plenty of patients. You know, there's always patients. Yeah. Do you want the patients? Are you willing to work the hours? Do you want to drive to the patient? If you go meet them, do you like the neighborhood? I was a night nurse, so I was also very picky mm. about the neighborhoods that I'm in. And I don't want to, you know, I hope that doesn't make people be like, dang, she's terrible. But in all reality, I'm a woman by myself coming to a place at night into someone's home. I'm going to make sure that I'm comfortable before I, you know, make any decisions. So the only thing I will say is you need to do your work, your, your, you need to go in and check ahead of time, do your interviews, do your shift, um, and then be honest and tell them that you don't want the patient. Don't accept a patient out of obligation because one, you're just going to fail the patient, right? You're going to end up being burned out. You're not going to, you're not going to go in or or something like that. You're going to hate your job. You're going to be miserable. I am a person that thrives on being happy in every aspect of my life. I will not be miserable at work when I to be happy at work. (laughs) So yeah, there are there were gaps in in um, care for me, but I was okay with that because I would you know rather you know be be comfortable. Um, yeah. I would say that there are options for PRN um, home health. So like if you're waiting for a permanent patient, um, I would take on those patients that need help. I would say you know what I'll work with this person PRN while you find me a permanent case. Like if you're someone who the luxury to be able to be out of work for a little bit, right? Because we know sometimes you just have to have your patient and you have to suck it up. Mm -hmm. But maybe just don't take them on full time. Say, I'll work these full time hours, but I'm coming on as PRN and I want you to find me a patient that I'm comfortable with, but I'll do the work right now because we can all get through a shift or two, right? We can all make it. (laughs) Yeah. So So that's my advice. If you have to um, have a patient, you can also work for multiple agencies. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, You can get on. I was on with uh, two agencies at one point in time. And if I would work PRN at one and if they didn't have patient for me full time, then, you know, I would go to the other one or whatever. So that gives you a little bit more like opportunity to find. Yeah. So you don't have to just work with one pediatric home health agency. It's just like long term care. You can have five long term care jobs. Who cares? (laughs) <laughs> as long as you're showing up to the shifts you accept. So that's what I would say of how you could kind of um, mitigate that is just work for multiple agencies. That allows for more flexibility, even though it kind of can seem daunting of picking up with different companies at the same time. And what if one demands get more, one demands get less? Was it pretty easy to shift between? Because you said you were on and off over the years. And so it it wasn't like, didn't seem bad for the company to be like, oh, well, she's, she's not here in the long haul kind of a thing. Oh, no, not with home health. And especially the company that I've been with, I've been with the same company um, um, the whole time, except for that little bit of time I worked for both, but I just ended up just keeping, um, you know, just quitting the other, the other job. Um, But like they, (sighs) I think because it's home health, you have to be super flexible, right? Because you can go into a facility or a a home and you can like the patient, everything go well. The parents have the right to tell you that they don't want you to come back at any point in time for any reason, right? Because this is home and it's so personal that you have to be completely comfortable. And so do they, right? So I think because of that, um, you know, that sometimes it doesn't work out and they have to, you know, call a nurse and tell them that you had, that the parents don't want you to come back or, or you, you call them. I think it just allows for the flexibility and they expect it. Mm-hmm. Right. I think okay. that they um, have a, a problem with it. And I would usually, I worked my, my one case, cause I, I know you can do PRN or you can um, hop between patients and never actually take on a full patient. Hmm. Um, and they'll give you kind of um, an area that you're willing to cover, and then they'll find you patients in that area. And so you can get work without taking on one patient. If you, if you, especially, and especially if you're a person that likes that um, that kind of diversity, you mm-hmm. know, you 
shake it up some, you don't like to do the same thing, you get bored fast. So that might be something you can do. You can pick up um, just a lot of um, different patients in the area and just be um, a PRN nurse or a floating nurse or however you want to call it. Um, so you, you know, you can do that, but I was the type of person that took on one patient at a time. I like to know what I'm going into mm -hmm. and I like to plan. So I would finish out the, um, I would finish out the, the time that I was there. So if I was on for, you know, 12 weeks or whatever, um, or the parents didn't need me anymore or something like that, I would work the entire time. So I wouldn't like just drop cases. Does that make sense? Okay. So, yeah had a problem with me coming back and forth because it's not like I was like, oh, I don't work with them no more. I don't work with them anymore. Um, because I pretty much knew if I took the case, I was on because I did my research beforehand, right? I showed up at night. I did my interviews. I worked my shift. So I knew what to expect. So I was able to stay on full time until there was no longer a need for me. So they, they didn't care. Awesome. With home health, do they typically want or encourage nurses to have experience prior to going into home health or any special certification? You do need experience. Um, uh, from my experience, you had to have, I think, six months of experience. But that's funny because they hired me literally right out of school. I had like a month, not even a whole month of experience <laughs> with a brand new LVN. Um, in Oklahoma, and I was working at the LTAC, and um, I needed to come back to Texas for my husband. You know, he, he was living here in Texas. <laughs> come back for, come get my man. So um, I was <laughs> I'm trying to get back as, you know, as soon as possible. And so I just started applying, and they hired me. I mean, I had less than a month experience, <laughs> but the thing, like on the job requirements, it does say you need six months, but I think they were just in need of nurses. And so they were like, we're going to have to wing this, and let this see what happens here. So yeah. um, typically they do want um, six months of nursing experience and it doesn't matter where you're a nurse at um, for the company that I'm with. Um, and it doesn't, you don't need any special certificates. They do training for you. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, um, you have to do like a whole day um, training to do like um, G tubes and make sure that your skills are where they're supposed to be at. Yeah. So do that before they actually assign you a patient. And then if you want to take on like a trach or event kid, then you have to do a special um, training for that. So they'll train you in house for what they need you to do. Oh, that's good. They make sure you're competent and up to skill. So that way yeah. um, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. That's really cool. I don't, jumping right at the gate with going brand new LVN, was that hard to transfer into being that sole provider role? Like, was that a little intimidating to be like, I'm the only one here. So if something goes wrong or were the kids pretty much for the most part stable? Well, the kids were pretty much for the most part stable. I, like I said, I, I was not taking on anything that I was not comfortable with as, as a new LVN. And of course, being a new LVN or a new nurse in general, you're, you're nervous, you know, you're you you've got this training in school, but we all know yeah. you don't get training <laughs> until you hit the floor. Um, so it was definitely intimidating. Um, but you know, as a new nurse, you're also really yeah familiar with the book and how things are done by the book. Yeah. Like so yeah. I just stuck to what I knew. You know, I just 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 did what I needed, and I asked for help if I you know if I needed help. Um, and it was just that simple, but my patient was pretty stable. He was pretty good. I didn't, um, I didn't take on anything crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> I was pretty comfortable. Awesome. Working in home health, uh, were there any doors that opened for you either personally or professionally with the schedule or the, the flow or the type of work? For me, I used that opportunity to, um, to build my businesses and get into entrepreneurship and kind of um, open that door. Like I was able to, I did go to school as well at the beginning. I was going to go back for my RN. So at the beginning, I used that time to work. Um, I worked nights and that allowed me to study um, at work because nights are always a little more calm. Um, and then you just have the one patient, you're literally sitting at their bedside. I think it'll be fun if you read a book, you know what I mean? <laughs> Stay awake anyway there's not a lot to do so with the home health environment it's such a calm environment there's not it's not fast paced you know even with the sicker kids it's still so much more calm and relaxing in a, a home setting or in a, um, um, a facility setting and so yeah it allowed me to to 
explore other things, right? So I went to school for a little while. Um, I Then I decided that I wanted to be um, an entrepreneur and I, you know, did my real estate um, and studied my real estate on night shift. Um, that was back and forth at a long-term care facility and with pediatrics. So this is not specifically what I did in pediatric, um, but my last two businesses definitely at the <laughs> my patients <laughs> at night in pediatric home health. So yeah, it allowed me to explore other options. You know, I took that opportunity to not just like read random books for pleasure or mm -hmm. just movies all night, which sometimes you just got to watch a movie, yeah. right? Got to stay awake. So <laughs> I made that time, you know, to just, to just play around. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, okay. I'm going to be here watching my patient, making money while I'm figuring out other ways to make money mm -hmm. or while I'm other things to do, how to progress my life, how to learn more. So uh, yeah, I, I definitely took that opportunity to, to progress and it opened up more doors because I had the time to do it. I guess you can call it multitasking or whatever. <laughs> I was able to leverage that job and, you know, do other things. So yeah. Do you have any more advice? For um, Really, if you're going into home health, I think I've already said it all. Just do your research. Um, you know, just make sure that you're ready to advocate for yourself. Uh, when you go into the, the homes, you know, um, I'm not saying look around and judge people, right? What I'm saying, make sure that your patient has the tools that they need because one big issue in home health is they may have an order for something, but the family maybe can't get it. Either the in it might be an insurance issue or maybe the insurance only provides a certain amount of of um, item and then they run out. So I've been in you know situations where there's no more catheters, right? And you're as a straight catheter, there's no more catheters. And then the family has to like wash old catheters, you know, stuff like that. So you need to like make sure one that you're comfortable doing things like that. Or um, in that situation, for me personally, I allowed the mom to cath the patient because I was not willing to wash a catheter. Um, I understood the, the, the situation. I understood that there was no option. But for me, I wasn't comfortable with it. So I just would, and you know, advocate for yourself. Tell the parents you're, you're not comfortable doing it, um, that it's, you know, for you to do. Because I was like, mm -mm. the way they had it going, I didn't like it. So <laughs> I was like, I don't I feel like this. I don't like this. Um, but you understand that some people don't have the means to get their everything that they need. And so you need to be okay with telling the family, hey, I'm not okay doing it this way, but you can, and then you just chart. So always chart, that's another tip. Always chart everything that happens. If the parents do something and you gave, you know, that you weren't comfortable with, so you told them to do it, chart that. So just cover yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to cover yourself, you have to cover your license, you know, and just make sure that the essential things that your patient needs are there or you are upfront and open. Don't do stuff just because you don't wanna like ruffle any feathers or you don't wanna like look like, well, this is what I'm here for. I'm here to take care of them. I'm not gonna let the mom. Mm, okay, cause that mom is not gonna be there when the board of nursing has, you know, sits you down and tries to talk to you about what yeah. you um, The mom's not gonna be there and she's gonna be fine. Cause guess what? Mom can do whatever she wants. That's her kid. She can hold meds. She can give extra meds. She can mm. you know, pour baking soda down a G-tube, which is something that I like. She can do whatever she wants. OK, you cannot. You are licensed and you are not this kid's, you know, family or mom and you don't have an order. So, you know, just remember that don't get sucked into it. Yes, it's the home health age, uh, realm, so they can do it. Mm -hmm. You just remember that. Yeah. Boundaries, charts and you just cover yourself. So that's, that's the biggest thing. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Ashley. We love talking yeah. to you. Yeah, I had fun. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. 